right, folks, grab a seat and pour your drink neat as Whiskers and Whiskeys presents our last conference preview episode, the culmination of our all our work here as we try to predict the very first 12-team playoff. I'm Mike with me, ZJ. How you doing, pal? Well, I'm doing a lot better. Um, yes. And as, as the listeners um, have, have hopefully picked up on... Um, you know, my promise of of doing this Wolf Wall Street style uh, is being put to the test uh, because of uh, an illness that I had this last week that really uh, kicked to my ass. But I am feeling fantastic now. I am out of my dungeon. Um, I am in a it, hotel It's just room. a hangover because you're, you're doing it Wolf Wall Street style until we pass yeah. out. And you just you just passed out a little bit early. Yeah, that's, yeah. That, that's a, a little bit early. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'm great. Um back in the the great state of virginia for some work here so i'm I'm out of the dungeon uh literally just landed so trying to trying to make right by my delay you know you guys should have been listening to this um earlier in this week but uh that's okay we're here um i did probably the most pittsburgh thing i've done since being in pittsburgh and that was at the airport which is kind of hilarious what'd you do well, I needed to eat, so naturally, when you see a Permanis there, you oh, yeah. grab, grab yourself a sandwich. But that's not it. So then I'm like, okay, well, you know, maybe I need some snacks uh, for the plane, or not really because it was a quick flight, but maybe for after. And yeah. I mean, they had a Sarah stand in oh, this yeah. section. So yeah. did I get some chocolate covered pretzels? I sure did. Yeah, I bet those cost a lot more than the giant eagle. But, you know, <laughs> probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's I, I, dude, I'm the same way. I think because I only took one flight out of Pittsburgh so far, uh, and I also ate that for Manny's, and then I did not buy the Saris, but I already had some uh, like chocolate chip peanut butter bobos in my bag, so that was my. And I think I had some peanut butter M Ms. I, I, I stay with the sweets when I travel because you know if. Uh, I got a little sweet tooth. I like to have a have a little nightcap. You know, so I gotta have some sweets on me at all times. But sure. uh, I mean, this is this is kind of so this is kind of your flu game, and it's also uh, you know whiskey's and whiskey after dark here because we're recording much later than we normally do here, and I am uh, I'm exhausted, man. I don't know if it's the crappy weather that got me or it's that I've been up late with NCAA every night, but uh, I uh, <laughs> it's just it's just getting me, man. I uh I, I think I'm gonna, I'm not gonna play after this. I'm gonna get a, get a good night's sleep. I actually have not started my next season with Texas Tech because I was trying to figure out. I, I'm now the head coach of Texas Tech, by the way. First head coach. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to, you know, all this. There's been a really good a lot of good content out there. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of like new you know YouTube people. I, I don't like watch a lot of YouTube's for, like video games and stuff, but. With this, I have been enjoying some uh, some Master Civ and, and Fenler and all these guys. They're like doing this cool stuff. So I've been watching some things. I've been trying to. Uh, I want to choose an offensive playbook for Texas Tech that I think personifies them well, and also a very fun playbook. So I've been playing a couple like exhibitions with Oregon, with Arizona, with Bama, with Oklahoma State, but. I think is only right at Texas Tech. I am going to be running the go go offense from UNLV. So I am. I think it's you know it, it's under multiple. I think is how they name it. It's not quite air raid, but like it's it's going to be. I want run a lot of trips. Want to run a lot of stuff uh, that will be good in the hurry up. So I'm uh, I'm pretty excited about uh, about getting UNLV's playbook a spin, and then we'll see, man. You know. Committed, I'm committed to Texas Tech, and we'll see how things go from there. We're going to take a game at a time, but I'm committed to Texas Tech. All right, yeah. I mean, I've I, I've tackled the air raid the entire time I've been coaching, um, and I don't regret it at all. And it's great. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm very excited to give this this uh, this go go playbook's pretty exciting. So got a lot of uh, I just hard to stop. Hard to stop plays. <laughs> what you do? Can't cover everyone. So, no. uh, but yeah, here we get into the episode now is our, our thank you all for listening to our conference previews. Uh, this is the culmination of all that effort. As I said, as we listen, as we uh, list out our bracket for the playoffs and I don't know about you, man, but like I am still 
like up until we recorded and like we started recording and even during as we go through i may make some changes was it set in stone for you or like you know have you been tinkering like were you on the flight kind of tinkering with it knew that we were knowing that we were gonna record yeah no yeah i i tinkered a little bit so i just i laid out how i thought it would go like truthfully like even during the conference and and i know i probably took the high end on everyone but that Mm -hmm. was going to even itself out anyway so Mm -hmm. because i went on the higher end like i said for everyone so if i'm off by a game or two it's i'm likely to be off by a game or two for everyone but um i I don't know when i when i really wrote out my one through 12 it made sense and kind of fit i did tinker a bit with a couple of teams to avoid play like the, the bracket was set up where the, a few teams were going to play twice even three times yeah, for the season yeah. and while that's obviously very possible and <laughs> i almost want to say likely uh i didn't find it as as fun so yeah. <laughs> I, I i maybe twisted a couple of the middling teams or oh, middling um just in the bracket uh teams here and there just to avoid that but no i mean and even when i went through it even after those tinkers you know uh, I, I still ended up with the, the, the final four that I, I had before and then the final two and the final one. Yeah. So that's what, that's what I'm a little bit nervous about is that I have some teams like playing each other again, but I think it's just, a vo- it's hard to avoid. Yeah. Given that there are two conferences that are uh, big, t- the big 10, the sec are just, they're going to get multiple teams. The, and I think that some of them are going to be able to clear their first round matchups. And that's like, well, what do you do? Right. So, right. Uh, you know, I, it's, it's hard to avoid. I'm sure that, you know, it's, it's just the reality of what's going to happen yeah. uh, with this expanded field. So, yeah, I, I have a, I have a little uh, thing that I don't want to derail us right now, but I have something to ask you at the very end. Okay. Um, let me actually write it down. So yeah. I don't forget. R- write it down. Don't, don't forget about it. Do not forget about it. And I mean, it, you know, it happens, right? I mean, Alabama and Georgia have played in the finals more than once. I'm staring at uh, right here, which I need to hang the 2017 national championship, you know, Georgia, Alabama. And that wasn't the, it was the first time they played men. I think the first time they met in the, definitely the first time for the title. I think the first time in general that they played in the playoffs, but certainly not. The oh, one. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because I think it's usually been one or the other. Right, like since it's been a playoff, Georgia really hadn't made it because of Bama until this by twenty by twenty seventeen. Yeah, oh yeah, right, because that yeah. was twenty seventeen. So, and then the playoff started. Yeah, because the first one was Oregon, Ohio State, Alabama. No, Oregon, Ohio State, Alabama. Who's the fourth team in the first one? Yeah, that's a good question. Oklahoma, maybe. I feel like they've been they've made it a couple times. I don't remember. No, that was um that was later. Um it was it would have been a Big 12 team though. Or uh, or Oregon was in the pack. Ohio State and this is hard because conferences have changed. So oh, it was an ACC team. Yeah. No. Ohio State beat Alabama in the first game, and then Oregon won by 40 in the Rose Bowl against, because Urban Meyer had that press conference called Oregon won by 40. They beat, um, was Florida State in it that year? I think it, or was it? Maybe it was Oklahoma. Um. No, I don't think it was Oklahoma. Because they had a real they had a little hiccup there. All right, so the very first one. Okay, yeah. Someone's okay. like screaming right now. Well, yeah, it, it is. Sure. Alabama was the one, Ohio State was the four. That was the famous yep. Cardale year, right? Yeah. Um Oregon destroyed Florida State. Florida State. Boom. So that might have been Jameis. No, that was the year after Jameis. That was right after. Well, mm, J- did, was Jameis's last year the year they beat Auburn? Uh, let's see here. It's this is uh, Delvin Cook. Yeah. Who, uh, oh, it was um quarterback with the kiss mark on his neck, right? 
Um, no, this was Jameis. Oh, it was Jameis? Okay. Yep. Jameis is senior year then. Okay. Jameis Mariota. Right. Right. Interesting. Because okay. Brandon Walker and Big T were just talking about who the better quarterback is between Mariota and Jameis, who the college quarterback. Yeah. Brand's like, well, Jameis had the natty. Well, Mariota hung 40 on him the next year. So, But that wasn't... <laughs> Anyways. All right. <laughs> Let's get into it here. Yeah. <laughs> enough enough trips down. We could do this all day. We could. Just uh, like Chris Evans. We can do this all day. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, all right. Maybe one day... It, Put the put a pin this listeners. Let us know if you think this would be a good idea. Maybe we just one day just have a podcast where it's just a ramble like that, where we just get a couple drinks in and we're in person and we just start <laughs> naming players, or we yeah. or we we create a slideshow with just random players and we just we just go through it from like the past ten years and just twenty years even and just have fun. But anyways, um, all right, let's get to it. So we're gonna start. With our first four teams uh, that have the bye. And just to remind everyone of the playoff format this year. So 12 teams. There are five automatic bids. The four Power Four champions get an automatic bid. And then the top rated group of five t- champion gets an automatic bid as well. And the rest of the team is filled out as the committee sees fit. Uh, we can start with our top four seeds who will have a first round bye. Um, EJ, would you like to go first? Sure. Um, so after after talking to Mike about this <laughs> and saying that uh, you know when we were trying to figure out how to what format to to do this in, um, I had mentioned that it probably makes sense to to do the first four because it might not necessarily be the conference champions. Uh, in my case, my four are my conference champions. Yeah. So. Same. I think it's. I think it's going to be just as a note there. I think it's going to be really hard um, for a non-conference, at least this year, maybe because yeah. I feel like conferences are pretty well stacked in the future, perhaps not. But I think it's going to be. I think it is going to be difficult for a. I could also see the committee rewarding the Power Four champions for being a champion more because it's not like you're yeah. going to leave the team out, right? They're just not right. going to get a buy. So, um, yeah. So my one seed. Uh, went with it, in my scenario. Uh, I actually think I might have put all these teams undefeated, uh, which is going to be tough. I think even again, if if some of them are one loss, as long as it's not as long as it's not the wrong loss, um, I, I still think these will be at the top. So if you're if you're putting them in order of um, how I think the committee would see them. I mean, naturally you're going to have the sec undefeated champion. So Ole Miss in this case for me, uh, is the one C that's so I, weird. That's I started <laughs> typing Georgia. That, I forgot <laughs> that you did that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then the two would be Oregon from the big 10 for me. Um, then the three would be, uh, uh, you could make an argument here, but I just see the committee love in Miami cause it's a uh, name brand. Uh, which leaves our potentially our favorite team of the four, uh, the Utes, as the four. Okay, okay. So, um, I, and just to remind folks, EJ thinks that Oregon is going to beat Ohio State twice. Uh, I sure did. Which, <laughs> maybe three times. We'll <laughs> see. Uh, all right. So I, um, you know, I also changed some things a little bit about how I think these championships are going to play out. Uh, so my one seed is Georgia. Uh, that the undefeated SEC champion Georgia, my two seed will be the one loss Ohio State. I think Ohio State. I think you can have me sold that it's it's likely that they'll go out to Eugene and get got, and then they'll they're not going to get got as good as they get got get them. Two seed Ohio State with one loss. Three seed is going to be Utah. I feel pretty good about their chances of uh, of doing well in the Big 12. But also, uh, I changed my ACC champion. I uh, got a lot of positive feedback, as we both did, for, for our love for the, uh, the Hokies. So I am going to – and you know what? I just – 
can I really rely on the Miami Hurricanes to have their best season ever? It, or not ever, obviously, but their best season in recent memory this year and like get things done in the ACC. I don't know that I can. So I'm taking the Virginia Tech Hokies as my four seed. I thought I thought that would be fun too. You know, I, th- I thought it'd be a good time. Have a little fun here. That's what we're doing. So I got Georgia as my one, Ohio State two, Utah three, Virginia Tech four. This better lead us to Lane Stadium, this pick. Oh, man. Would, wouldn't that be crazy if it did? I, I, if, if I'm right, we're going. We're going. <laughs> I'm right, we're going. Okay. All right. So then now, I guess what we can do here is, do we want to do, like, take the one seed and say, okay, who's going to be the 5-12 matchup? It's going to be, or I'm sorry, the 8-9 matchup that's going to be going against the one seed and then go down that way? Um, Sure. That works. Or do you want to do the uh, who's getting the who, who's going to be hosting the uh, the first round first and, and go through them in that manner? Um, actually, yeah, let's do I that. Kinda, yeah, I kind of I kind of like that. I kind of like painting that picture. Yeah, let's paint who's going to be who's going to be hosting. So okay, all right. Well, why don't we? Yeah, why don't we start with with my five then, and I'll just go five, six, seven, eight. So, this is this is where it got a little tricky, but at the same time, it really wasn't. Once I understood who I was going to put into this in general, I think I, I'm interested to see what your final numbers are going to be. But um, actually, yeah, I, I'm I'm curious on our approach on what we think the committee is going to do. Mm-hmm. Because I think I have a very, I think I know what they're going to do. It's not necessarily what I, uh, I'm hoping they, they're going to do, but I just know them mm-hmm. <laughs> and what they're going to do. So uh, I'm going to go with, my five is going to be Notre Dame. So ah. I'm going to have uh, the Fighting Irish, uh, as much as I dislike them, I think they have a great chance of being undefeated. Um, I think being out of a conference is going to hurt them always as far as getting that first round by. Um, mm. But I do think uh, even if they have one, one loss, I, I think uh, based on my other teams here, like they, they have a really good shot of being um, a, a five or a six here and, and hosting. And I think obviously that's one of the most iconic stadiums in all of college football. And I think that'll be a lot of fun. So in this case, I have them playing by a group of five team. And why don't we keep that to ourselves until we get through the matchups and then we can talk about our group of five. Cause that could take some explaining. Cause that's uh, yeah. someone we haven't broken down yet. Right. Yeah. Like uh, for e- either of us, um, yeah. we don't know each other's pick either. And, like, and we've not broken down Notre Dame uh, either for, for the, for the audience, but uh, I, I am, I am definitely bullish on Notre Dame this year. Uh, I think I'm going to take their win total over. Um, they did just suffer a, a big injury. I was yeah. just Googling, double checking that their offensive line and went down and yeah, the left tackle, you know, I just, I wonder a little bit about Notre Dame. Um, I, I do think that they're going to get, I went back and forth cause I thought that the committee was going to be, you know, uh, obviously they look favorably on Notre Dame as they always do, but I just feel like that there are a couple teams that are going to be very hard for them to put over Notre Dame. And and one of those teams is, is my five seed, which would be Oregon. Their only loss would be to Ohio state uh, in the, in the champion, in the big 10 championship in my mind. Uh, So I am going to put Oregon uh, as the five seed. And I also have them playing as the 12 seed, my uh, group of five champion. Uh, So we can, we can wait to share that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I I think I'm trying to see if I could quickly, if I had the piece of paper that had Notre Dame's schedule on it, but I feel like they had like they in 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 our preview, I I was low on Florida State, and that's a that's a team that they play. Obviously, they play USC, um, which is not likely to be like a a huge contender this year, but still quality. And then they just have some cupcakes. So I just I I in my scenario, even with their left tackle being hurt. There's a really damn good chance that they can go undefeated. So I I think that's why I have them high. But like you said, even if it's a one loss, I think in that case, if it's a one loss conference or a conference runner up and then a, a you know a one loss not in a conference, I think they're gonna lose that mm-hmm. um battle more times than not. But mm-hmm. um all right, number number six. 
So my number six school uh, is is again another team that I think you're going to have a really hard time uh, putting Notre Dame ahead of them because I think they're going to have a super strong year. They're just going to lose the SEC championship. That's Texas. Uh, I'm putting the horns in number six. Same. Hook them. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Like I said, in my scenario, I just had uh, Notre Dame going undefeated, and that's better than one loss. Yes. Even if it is a now, loss in the conference champion. So now, even if, that's an interesting point because if if Notre Dame does go undefeated, I do think it, is that me or is that? Do you hear that chirping sound? No, that's definitely that, that's come from outside. That's a very loud cricket, um, <laughs> noisy cricket like Man Black. Um, anyways. Uh no I I wonder if an undefeated Notre Dame would because I mean Oregon with one loss Texas with I don't know that Texas only have one loss I think that they could have two but like you know even still like it's it's Notre Dame does have a tough schedule this year but it's, it's Notre Dame it's out. Notre Dame yeah you yeah. have to remember that a lot of this is. How, as cynical it is as it is, I mean, it's about making money. And mm. while it might be negligible right now, whether it's you know a five or a six, I I just think on some years, a uh, undefeated Notre Dame's gonna potentially usurp, say, a two lost conference champion. In, yeah. in a buy, like it's just the 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 committee loves yeah. loves them. What well, now? Do I think you should be rewarded for winning a conference, and that should regardless of how many losses you have um should that keep you away from a buy mm -hmm. i personally don't think so but mm -hmm. i i just yeah i i think in my scenario again if they're undefeated even though texas has the extra game i could just still see the committee being yeah now i i do think that notre dame. i do think notre dame gets a home playoff game which is why i have them slated as my number 17 yeah. I think that the committee is not going to not give them a home playoff game. So I, I think that they'll get that. Uh, so I have Notre Dame in as my number 17. My my number seven is the the Georgia Bulldogs. So in, in my scenario, they are um, third place in the SEC and a two loss, 10 and two Georgia. So I, I still, as much as I think in that scenario, they should be, playing on the road mm -hmm. no chance in hell the committee's going to do that to them so yeah there's just zero chance so interesting so you have Notre Dame and then two sec teams mm -hmm. getting in interesting yes. is it well i mean what do you think how many games do you think ohio state's gonna lose two. Oh, two. two both the oregon mm -hmm. hmm which spoiler alert is going to be my other home team yeah Buckeyes get is my eight seed. And yeah, I I just feel like in that scenario the the committee would not put Ohio State behind two SEC teams. But this was my tinkering to avoid to avoid gotcha playing gotcha. multiple games. Yes, yeah. I had I had Ohio State uh, a little higher, but how um, initially? But I wanted to not have three games be played multiple times yeah. um so no I, I don't disagree um i think the biggest thing for me was like now my other four teams some of them might have a better record than than these other ones um but i just until the committee shows us that it's not about ratings and money and brand mm -hmm. i just think you're you're locking those four in regardless of what i think is going to happen with these next uh these next four yeah. as far as records like i yeah. just I, I think there's no way they're going to even in my worst case scenario you know for you know georgia and ohio state i still they think they're going to get rewarded with with yeah. home playoff games in this inaugural year and those are those are strong home playoff games. Notre Dame, Texas, Georgia, Ohio State. Those are all going to be great turnouts. Yeah. Um, and my my eight seed is actually Ole Miss. Yeah. Um, so I have very I have Oregon is my number five. 
I have Texas as my number six. We both do. Number seven, Notre Dame. And then number eight would be would be Ole Miss for me. The the third, my third, I do have, you know, like you, two SEC teams uh getting a home playoff game, obviously in addition to their champion, getting the number one overall seat. So um, you know, I, I think and this is what we talked about a little bit with the SEC, right? It's like even in the 14 playoff, there was always, you know. SEC bias or like are they really that good and I think that the committee is going to continue to favor them for the foreseeable future here until the Big Ten really takes a step forward which could could definitely happen with their new additions and with the uh the doing away of the uh of the conferences yeah I think this is just also a year truthfully where we kind of talked about it in our preview it's just like while the SEC has been down say you know in the last couple of years compared to what it what it usually does or it's really top heavy this this year they have five six teams that truthfully can can do damage and can do damage to other conferences yeah. in yeah. the big 10 it, it's it's the big two and the little 14 <laughs> or whatever it is now right right uh okay so then that takes us through our home playoff games who is your nine seed who will be playing the ohio state buckeyes in columbus so you're gonna know because these first these first two are why I flip flopped some of these ratings, but uh, or some of these numbers and rankings. But the Ohio State in Columbus, hopefully in a cold, snowy day, uh, those Tennessee Volunteers are, are, are gonna are, are gonna go into Columbus. Uh, I don't think they're gonna have a good time. Uh, I think Real I think it's time. gonna be. Uh, I, I again, I like them uh, more than you do. I think their quarterback's going to have a good year, but that's a it's a lot to ask for for him to continue to have big moment after big moment, and then on yeah. the road in a home playoff game or in a road playoff game in the cold. Yeah, yeah. I have I have the the balls making an appearance, but getting, wow! Getting so beaten. four SEC teams before we get anyone from the ACC. And the Big Twelve. I mean, Notre Dame obviously has to be is has to be there. But wow, four SEC teams. You just love the SEC. That's that's what they say about EJ. Old yeah. SECJ. That's. Uh, I'm just. I'm. I'm. I'm going to tell you right now. I I went pretty pessimistic on what I think the committee's going to do. This huh? is not okay. what I would do. What is what but the committee? What the committee's going to do? Uh, I have actually. This is where we differ a little bit because I am giving the ACC runner up Miami uh, my nine seed. Uh, and I, you know, it's going to be uh, just a quick trip over to Oxford for them from uh, from Florida. But uh, you know, I think uh, I think that they are going to have an impressive year. I think you know, Vatex just going to get them. Uh, I think they they you know, we'll, I wouldn't be surprised if we're in a situation where we're talking about you know, Miami first you know first round by and everything like that. Like it's it it's going to be a situation. I think at the end of the year where they're going to be playing really well. And it's gonna be all right. Is Miami gonna get you know first round bye? Are they gonna give it to the second SEC team or the the Big Ten runner up? And then they're gonna choke to the Hokies, hopefully. And uh, and uh, that's that's gonna be that. Uh, and then my ten seed traveling to South Bend to play the Irish will be the Penn State in the Lions. Again, as we talked about in our preview, uh, I'm rather bullish on that 2022 class. I think that, you know, obviously they're not in the upper tier uh, that uh, that Oregon and Ohio State are, but I do think that they're still going to have a really impressive year. Um, talked to my brother-in-law and asked him what he thought. He's like, I just can't trust Drew Hour. I'm like, fine. But you know what? I think that they have enough talent on that squad right now, enough blue chippers around still that it'll be good enough for a playoff appearance and a ten seed for them. Yes. So my ten seed is the Nittany Lions of Penn State. There we go. Um, I don't know. It, it was by default. Yeah. <laughs> to be truthful. Yeah. Um, it is what it is. We went through it. I mean, I don't think they're good enough to beat the best teams on their uh, schedule. However, they are better than 80% of the other teams on their schedule, and mm -hmm. that's going to be enough to comfortably get them into the playoff, um, and they will be traveling to Sanford uh, Stadium, in which 
they are going to have a bad time. Real bad time. Real bad time. <laughs> they, will, they will not like to play the Georgia Bulldogs in Athens um, in a home in the first home playoff game. Yeah, uh, with those dogs barking and uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Who is your eleven seed? So I traveling to Texas. Both of these teams that we have will be traveling to to Austin. So and and I couldn't help myself with this one. Um, and it was actually kind of a happy coincidence the rivalry part of this. Um, however, let me be very clear that this could very well be a much more boring team. Uh, <laughs> it might even be more likelier to be this boring team, but it's the Cornhuskers. It's, oh, it's the Nebraska <laughs> little home cooking. They, little home cooking. They're going to Austin. Uh, it, it's going to be, uh, a revival of an old Big 12 uh, rivalry, um, and uh, it should wow. be a lot of fun. Iowa was another consideration because of their cake schedule. Mm -hmm. um, they play each other. I, it very well could come down to winner goes to the playoff. And mm -hmm. in my scenario, I think Nebraska's offense is just going to be better, um, and their defense is not going to necessarily be as elite as I was, but it's not going to be that much further behind. So, um, yeah, I have the Cornhuskers going to, to, pl to play the Longhorns, um, and I have the Longhorns coming away with the home victory. Okay. So I uh, I guess I should so, – so, well, we, we can go back and recap too, but, um, but you have – in your playoffs, the other teams getting in are strictly from the SEC and the Big Ten, minus the Irish, uh, which is fair. We think that those are going to be the two most dominant conferences. Um, I snuck in. I, 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 again, up to this point, have been all SEC, all Big Ten with the Irish, uh, except for the Irish and Miami, because, again, I think Miami will be kind of upset by the Hokies in the championship game. Uh, but then my last team, will I be the one to give the Big 12 a second team, a second seat at the table? And I will not be. <laughs> I will be taking my Crimson Tide. My my, I, I think that, you know, the Boar's going to have a good year. I, I think that um, there's still a lot of talent there, as we talked about. They're my fourth place team coming out of the SEC. Um, and you just can't have the first round of the playoffs without the Tide, baby. Uh, they will be going to Austin. However, I uh, I don't think it's going to be a good time. I think it's going to be shades of last year, week one, uh, and I think that they're they're going to uh, not do so good against the Longhorns. So, and to, just to go back, I also do have uh, well, I have Ole Miss beating up on Miami when they travel to Oxford, but I do have the Nittany Lions getting an upset in South Bend and taking out Notre Dame. I think that. Uh, it's just going to be whatever momentum Notre Dame has, if they are undefeated, if they have won a loss, whatever it is, I think there's going to be a little break. And I think that that's not good for a team that's hot. And I think that, you know, giving Penn State some time to think about it, being on the road, actually, I think is probably a good thing for James Franklin and the Lions this year, as opposed to a home game for them. I think there's a little bit less, you can be a little bit more of an underdog and things like that and just let the talent come out. And I think that uh, that that uh, the team's getting, getting pull off an upset here. And then uh, my champion uh, from the group of five, I was, you know, back and forth because I think that there's a couple deserving teams this year that, you know, could be uh, the top rate group of five champion. Um, but I really thought, okay, first playoff here. Uh, who's someone who's fun, familiar, uh, someone that, you know, would just be cool to see in the playoffs. And, you know, I think that even folks who aren't as into college football as we are, uh, you know, we're like into it, but like, you know, aren't into like the, the, the group of five teams, everything like that. Uh, everyone knows Apple action state. Everyone knows how they knocked off Michigan. So I am taking app state to get done to to be the group of five team that's chosen and to just get absolutely molly whopped when they go out to Eugene and play the Ducks. Uh so App State is my uh is my 12th seed. From the okay. fun belt. The, yes. Putting the fun in fun belt. So 
I have a team that I want to be in and I'm going to put them in, but I think there's going to be a team that's going to be ranked higher than them. Even though if they played each other, I think my team would beat them nine out of 10 times, but I have a bad feeling that this team's going to get screwed because of a strength of schedule thing um, versus this other team. So I think Boise is who should be in and uh, that's who I'm going to choose. I think the problem with them is while they, they, they had a, they won the mountain West last year. Uh, They played very well um, to end the season. Once they fired their terrible coach and promoted uh, at the interim, their defensive coordinator smartly just made him the head coach um, because the players, especially on the defensive side, really, um, really started to play for him, and they kind of surprised uh, UNLV, right? It was supposed yeah. to... UNLV was the hot hand, the sexy mm-hmm. team, and um, Boise so just handled... Playing. Yeah, yeah, just ha- handled them. So, And then they returned all of their defensive starters and um, have, according to Dean Brugler, you know, the athletic um, NFL scout guy, that their running back Jaunty is the best running back in the nation. Believe it or not, that's his first back off the board. In oh wow! His early um, in his early standings, which kind of really drew my attention. Uh, he definitely got offered seven figures to not be at Boise, uh, but decided to stay. And uh, they brought in Malachi Nelson, the the five star quarterback out of USC, which is also a very interesting story about him because he's a hometown LA kid and actually committed to Lincoln Riley when he was at Oklahoma. Uh, so it all meant yeah. he was supposed to be a Trojan, always wanted to be a Trojan, but yeah, life took him into a different path. Yeah, and he's excited for this Boise uh, thing, but I, I have Boise. I think they the problem is they play Oregon, um, so I think. They have uh, Mountain West, West is pretty good. I think they have a, a favorable schedule, especially having the Pac two both at home this year. So Oregon State, Washington State, both going. I think they're going to lose to Oregon. I hope that it's not a blowout um, for the sake for their sake. Uh, I think if they lose two, this might get unrealistic. Yeah. Because unfortunately, I think Liberty could go undefeated again. Yeah. Um, and the Conference USA is a joke, and that's that's the problem I'm having. Is yeah. I think maybe a one loss conference champion in a close, not even a close game, but a respectable game to Oregon, especially after seeing what Liberty did in the playoff last year or in their bowl game last year. Um, Hopefully that the committee will not pick them, but Mm -hmm. Liberty could be almost a lock. The only team that could stop them is the Appalachian state mountaineers so i'm hoping that that's actually um a game i I like the app state i just think they they have a little bit of a rough schedule and it's it's you know they get through it then they're definitely it yeah yeah Um, i i i like the boys you pick man i i i think you know is if you talk a little bit it like let's say that scenario happens where it's you know an undefeated liberty versus one maybe two loss boise state champion of the mountain west you know depending on the quality of those losses, like, you know, same thing I was saying about App State. Like, everyone knows Boise State, even casual fans, you know, the blue field yeah. and, you know, everyone, you know, Statue of Liberty play hook and ladder against Oklahoma. Like, so I, I could definitely, I think it would be really cool that they get in. I could see the committee being like, who's going to, who are people going to tune in for more? Are they going to tune in for Liberty? Or are they going to tune in for Boise State? Now, yeah. they are going to Notre Dame, uh, <clears throat> what do you think is going to happen if uh, when Boise plays Notre Dame in South Bend? Do they play Notre Dame this year? No, in, in your playoff. Oh, oh, sorry. I was like, yeah, yes. Oh. I mean, they're going to. You're, you're predicting it. So, <laughs> um, I, th- I think Notre Dame wins. I, I think it's uh, this is where just too much talent. And when I'm really trying to think of winning a road playoff game even winning on the road in college football playoff or not is hard as hell so yeah. you got to be pretty significantly like you have to really believe in that team above the other and in this case I, I, anything could happen but i just think i don't think boise is that much better than notre dame to beat them in south bend yeah but yeah. do i think they'll get blown out absolutely not Fair, fair. All right, so you are taking all of the 
you're taking all of the um, home teams. So you got Notre Dame uh, taking Boise State. You've got Texas taking Nebraska, Georgia over Penn State, and Ohio State over Tennessee. And then I have Oregon, number five, Oregon over number 12, App State. Number six, Texas over Alabama. Uh, Seven, Notre Dame is losing to Penn State. And then Ole Miss, number eight, taking on and defeating number nine, Miami. So then that brings us to uh, our quarterfinals. Yes. Thank you. (laughs) So uh, in the quarterfinals, uh, EJ, you have, well, what's what's more fun? Going with the one seed, starting with the one seed or starting with the four seed? Yeah, why don't we do the one? Sure. All right. Madness style, top left. All right. So you have Ole Miss take on Ohio State. Um, what's what's going to happen, man? I wish that this game was also played on campus, and I hope that they ditch that scenario where they don't. Um, but in this case, I still have my running Rebels uh, beating the Buckeyes. No, nice. uh, I just I just see Ohio State differently. Um, they really have to prove it to me. I think there's a I lot they do. of hype. Yeah, there's there's a lot of hype for this team, which is not always a great thing. Uh, a lot of pressure because Ryan Day and his evil beard is definitely on the verge of being fired if the season seat. doesn't big go. hot seat. Yeah. Um, I you know I'm hesitant with Chip Kelly. Uh. That, that that's just automatically going to work year one, mm-hmm. second one. Um, most importantly, I just don't know if I believe in Will Howard, to be honest with you. The mm-hmm. dude wasn't going to win the Kansas State job, hence why mm-hmm. he's not there. Yeah. And if you can't win the Kansas State job. What are you going to do in Ohio State? Yeah. That was my hesitation with Ohio State. So I just see him different. Obviously, yeah. if it gels, they are <laughs> a national champion, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's a very thin line yeah i'm just on yeah. the other side of it yeah um so i've i've Ole Miss overpowering them and lane, i lane train baby i too have obviously georgia playing Ole miss and i also have Ole miss getting the w in the quarterfinals <laughs> i think that they get done against georgia lane train let's go i just think that uh again very similar to uh, momentum and what we talked about. Wayne's a guy who thrives on that, so I think that you know, I, I think that they'll actually get it done. I, I am pretty, uh, pretty confident that if they were to see each other, that that would be the uh, the outcome in the postseason. So, um, it, it's some of what you said too. I think that Georgia, uh, when we talked in our preview and why you took Ole Miss at the top, like I think that the dynamic passing attack and offense of Ole Miss, if, you know, Jackson Dart does what he does and things move forward this season, I think it's going to be tough to beat. I think that's going to be hard for Georgia to keep up with, given that they are um, reloading on offense. So, uh, all right. Then, two seed, you have Georgia and Oregon. So, does Georgia fare better in your scenario against Dan Lanning? <laughs> they do not. They do not. Dan, Dan, Dan gets revenge on his old team, even though it's not really revenge uh, per se. Um, but I, 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 I just, uh, as much as I'm hesitant about Ohio state, I'm confident in Oregon. I really, I really like Dan landing. I really like how, even though this is arguably one of their best teams in, in their school history, um, they're still not being talked about nearly mm-hmm. as much as they should uh, because Ohio State in the Big Ten has taken uh, away some of that that shine. And I think he proved last year that he is a pretty petty man, and I think they're going to have a massive chip on their shoulder after losing to Washington twice last year So mm-hmm. and being held out of all this festivities. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, I would love that game to be at Autzen, um, but even neutral site, I think that they um, – Again, similar. I, I think their offense is going to outpace Georgia's, and Oregon's defense is going to be good enough to like, yeah, play defense. So yeah. So your second seed, Oregon Ducks, defeat the seven seed Georgia Bulldogs. My second seed, uh, Ohio State, plays the ten seed, uh, Penn State, uh, and the I, rematch. I, huh? The rematch. The rematch. Yes. And things still don't do good, go well for the Nittany Lions. Uh, this is where 
you know, just something I don't think James Franklin's going to be able to get past in, in two, two coaches who seem to be unable to, you know, win the big one, uh, short of a meteor hitting the field during the game. Someone has to win this one. Uh, and I think that the talent at Ohio State will win out here. So we will be seeing the two seed Ohio State in the semifinals. Uh, and they will be playing the winner of my three seed Utah and succeed Texas. And uh, pretty clear here. I, I got to do it. Hook them. Hook them. Texas gets it done uh, against the Utes. Um, if this was to your point, uh, you know, if this was going to be a, a home game at the stadium at Rice Heckles, I might be having second thoughts here. But uh, I think that, you know, the. Uh, <clears throat> The the age advantage that that uh, Cam Rising and, and and company have in Utah just uh, is gonna be enough against uh, against Quinn Ewers and a uh, a very strong resurgent Longhorn team. Uh, so I am going with uh, with Longhorns over Utah, setting up an Ohio State Texas matchup, which is oh, I hope we get it because that is that's just sexy. Uh, who's who's yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just even, even just how much of a shame is it that, like, in this case, Utah has a hell of a year, gets into the playoff, gets a bye, and then they can't even have a game at Rice Eccles. You're going to punish the first four teams for having buys and then having to go to neutral sites the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. It's just not right, man. Mm -hmm. right. Well, uh, right or not. This is what it is. This is how the uh, how they pay the bills around these parts here, uh, and and you also have the Longhorns as your as your six seed going through, and they will be playing uh, number three Miami, significantly different program cultures than than Utah. Uh, who comes out on top between the Canes and the Longhorns? Something that has happened many times in the past. Feels it like this is, you know it's it's a nice resurgence. Of a good rivalry, and this will be a really if this plays out this way, that'll be a very exciting game. Yes, um, especially since it's probably going to be played at like Hard Rock anyway, which is yeah. hilarious. it's probably that's probably one of the yeah. locations. And um, Texas will probably Texas fans will definitely show up in droves. Yeah, yeah. it'll be a home game for the Horns. Uh, I think this is where we stop uh, trusting Mario Cristobal, and I think had to be done. This is where Texas has. A lot of guys returning, um, especially their quarterback. They've had that taste, and they want more. So I think that the Longhorns upset the the Hurricanes, but I bet you that line, if that were to happen, would probably be pretty close anyway. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I think if this matchup were to happen, this is where, again, the talent, uh, the more proven talent wins out, because certainly yeah. Miami has the talent, but are they more proven? All right, and the number four for you, now, in your situation, Utah, not at Rice Eccles, but they uh, get Notre Dame at a neutral site. Mormons versus Catholics. You, this, yeah. EJ, I really like your bracket. This is some Thank good you. stuff. Here. I know. This is something I know. I'm getting tingles thinking about us watching this. I hope come that it's winter. I like, like I like your bracket a lot. We get a lot of fun <laughs> games here. So Mormons versus Catholics. What's wh who's the who's the winner there? I mean, uh, this couldn't have made me happier that it fell this way because there's probably one team on here that I feel confident Utah could take down, and that's Notre Dame. Yeah, and I think they do. I think they punch their ticket to the semis. I think it's a grinded out, disgusting game. Uh, and their their defensive will and 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 Whittingham gets on the the main stage here. Although I, I do actually like um Marcus Freeman. Marcus Freeman? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um and, and like I said, I don't really like Notre Dame, but I think these teams would be very evenly matched. I think they would want to play a pretty similar style. Um, even though I get Riley Leonard can run the ball a bit, but I don't know. I just I think this would be a hell of a matchup. Close, close game. I, I like my Utes. Yeah, yeah. I like how you said I like the I love the way this played out. Like you didn't pick these games. So uh that's yeah. But I wasn't uh, thinking like how do I how do I get Utah through? Don't let me find it. It just happened to be, you know, how I saw Notre Dame. They, they yeah, would, they would just play Utah. Uh 
All right, and my four or five matchup is going to be the Hokies, uh, four seed Hokies versus the five seed Ducks. Listen, uh, this is you know I have to be realistic here. I, I you know love my my boys Connor and Nick, uh, you know, and all the Hokie fans out there. But let's let's be real, guys. Uh, Dan Lanning's going to be very pissed off, gentlemen. And he's going to take it out on the Hokies here. So uh, I have uh, Oregon. If they are in this situation, they will get it done. And that sets up our final four. Um, EJ, you have one seed Ole Miss playing four seed Utah in the semi- semifinals. And then two seed Oregon playing the six seed Texas Longhorns. I have some some crossover here. Those seeds are, are uh, a little miss. Actually, we have three of the four teams the same just seeded. They got there in completely different ways. Uh, I have five seed Oregon playing eight seed Ole Miss. Uh, and then I have two seed Ohio State playing six seed Texas. Uh, let's go with the lower ranked matchups first. Uh, so two seed Oregon, six seed Texas. How does this play out for you, EJ? This is going to just be an epic game. It is. It's, it's just going to be back and forth. Um, probably last possession, and in this case, I I I like Oregon a tad bit more than Texas. Yeah, and I just again, I think this would be a really great matchup. I think both head coaches have something to prove after having some hiccups uh, at, at late games and big moments last year. Um, I just I I get nervous about. Texas and losing their two big boys. Um, those are were, were, were what made their defense so good is teams didn't even try to run the ball. And I think this year teams might run the ball okay. And Oregon has a pretty good run game on top of obviously what they can do in the pass game. And so I uh I think it's a last last possession, last person with mm-hmm. the possession, you know, last team with yeah. the ball at the end. Um wins it. I think it's the ducks. And Sark, as head coach of Texas, has not showed us that he can win uh, if he is the last person with the ball in his hands because uh, he inevitably inevitably will not be that person. Yes. Uh, so I agree. If we're, I'm already, I like your scenario so much, man. I'm already living it as if it's my reality. So I'm very excited to see this match. It's going to be close. Uh, but yeah, you have Oregon t- uh, taking out Texas. I also have, as we mentioned, Ohio State playing Texas. Um, they don't feel it fair better in my scenario either. The the Big Ten team uh, gets them. Big Ten team with an O gets them. So I think the Buckeyes would would take out um, Texas. Again, another situation where two teams, uh, similar to what I had earlier with uh, with uh, Ohio State and Penn State, Ryan Day is just getting some good matchups here. He's playing coaches <laughs> who don't know how to finish. Uh, so I have uh, Ryan Day. Uh, and the Buckeyes uh, taking out Texas here. And then uh, on the other end of the bracket, <laughs> eight seed Ole Miss uh, uh, playing five seed Oregon, uh, Lane Train versus Stan Lanning, uh, two great coaches who I love. I really hope we get to see this matchup. I hope we get to see it in, in your point of view because I have an idea of what you're going to do. Uh, in my scenario where this happens, uh, Dan Lang and the Oregon Ducks get done against Lane. Too much, just too much, just just way too much uh, talent there, which sets up a um, a rematch. The third time these teams will play for the championship, Oregon and Ohio State. I may be feeling a type of way because of uh, in, in my uh, Florida season, of uh of ncaa as offensive coordinator i played georgia three times in you know regular season played him in the championship game played him in the playoffs played him in the first round of the playoffs after my bye which was so so hard so so hard one of the hardest games i've ever played i rage quit the first time because my two wide receivers and my running back went down the first half <laughs> that doesn't count uh so load up again and beat them uh just Call, call me what you want, but I, I can't can't let that happen. Uh, so so I have a rematch of the Big Ten Championship, Oregon versus Ohio State. EJ, that will not be possible for you. You will have Oregon. Who are they going to play? Ole Miss or Utah? Yeah, this is this is where the Utes 
the huge story comes to, to end. Um, just too much talent. I, I think Ole Miss will be able to score. Utah won't be able to keep up. Um, Ole Miss. Yep. And then our finals. Both yes. have both have Oregon. It's an all O final for both of us. <laughs> Ohio State, and Oregon, O's. Ole Miss, and and Oregon. It's oh. it's it's O's all around. Uh, who's who's the superior O? Is it the cursive? Is it the block? Or is it the one with the duck? I think again, this is going to be a hell of a matchup, and I think both teams will score points. In this particular case, I trust one defense more than I do the other, and I trust the defensive-minded coach, and I think that Oregon will have their first first national championship crazy. in school history. Which That's crazy. Our, our listener, Dave, who I'm hoping will, I haven't even asked him, but I'm sure he'll be in uh, to talk one of our trophies uh, in, in a few episodes here. But uh, he, yeah, I think it's very easy for anyone um, on the East Coast to forget that Oregon was a group of five school for the, essentially for the longest time. And it, it took Phil Knight, and co to to get them to where they're at and it's really pro really remarkable when you think of their stadium size where they're located um it, it's it's not it, it's it's it shouldn't be a national program but it is mm -hmm. and i think everyone's happy about that and i think this is when they finally deservedly so hoist that uh that first national championship it's it's been a long time coming you know you look yeah. back to little michael james marcus mariota you look back to some of those teams that they had back in the day and it's like how did those guys not win a national they very much should have won at least one the argument could be made that they should have won the first playoff you know when yeah. they played against you know cardale just happened to be the right guy at the right time and you know zeke was on that team too that very talented ohio state team but like my gosh they were putting up video game numbers all year that season. Um, and not the first time that, you know, there wouldn't be the last time that Oregon's gotten close and many people thought that they would win. Um, so you have Oregon uh, finally getting it done in the first 12 team playoff uh, against Ole Miss. Um, I have Oregon obviously dispatching Ole Miss. So we agree if they were to meet in the previous round, they'd take them out. And then I have the, 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 the third act, to Oregon, Ohio State. Oregon gets the first one. Ohio State gets the second one. I've said, I've maintained, Ohio State just has too much talent this year. Uh, but screw them. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. We, we took different paths to get there. But my champion as well is Dan Lang and the Oregon Ducks. If you're a Ducks fan here, Please put like triple braces on on Gabriel's knee because this is bad news for yeah, him. Yeah, this is not good. This is the, you being this far behind the docks. This is someone Dave, put I'm that sorry. kid. In, yeah, put that kid in a pad bubble like <laughs> at all times. Um, yeah, I really hope we're not jinxing this. Uh, well, I hope you're not jinxing it. The, yeah. the, the QB killer. But uh, yeah, wow, that's crazy. Different paths, but we both arrived at the same conclusion. Yeah, I just, uh, I think we did not plan this, by the way. No, uh, no. absolutely not. We um, have two, we each have two kids. We have too much going on to sit down and plan this out. So, no, yeah, it's, uh, it, I, I think this just, even just going through this, it's just so exciting because you're going to get so many good football games this year. Sometimes you're going to get rematches and even, you know, three time matches because it was very easily could, uh, my bracket of had uh, Ohio State and Penn State playing each other again, Georgia and Tennessee playing each other again, Ohio State and Oregon playing each other again, like for the third time. Like there were so many uh, just little tweaks here and there to avoid that. Uh, but I, I think it just goes to show you that this is going to be a hell of a year. And this is another year where there isn't a definitive champion. This, no. There isn't that SEC team that no. you know is just like every. It's cute. Everyone's going to run, be the runner up. It's just right. it's it's 
Maybe some team will run away with it, but as of now, it does not appear to be that anyone is that much better than everyone else. No, as, as we sit here at the, at the mid part of August, yeah, I agree completely. There, there's a lot of parity out there. There's a few complete teams, uh, but then there's quite a few teams who are very elite on one side of the ball with a lot of question marks on the other side of the ball. Um and, you know, I, I think that there are some shared themes that we have, obviously, besides our champion, right? Like that we we definitely see match up like rematches occurring in the playoff. It's it's going to be unavoidable because the SEC and Big Ten seem to be head and shoulders above the ACC and the Big 12 this year. Um, so we're just we're going to run into that. We both load up our, our, our playoff with SEC and Big Ten teams. Um, so, you know, I. As again, as we sit here right now, that looks like the most likely path. Who knows though? This, as we, as you just said, a lot of parity out there this year. A lot of teams that, you know, there's no clear winner. So hopefully, you know, we have some dark horses. I obviously have, you know, uh, the uh, the a big dark horse and the Hokies getting in and getting a first round buy. Uh, we will see how things shake out though. But uh, hopefully, I again, I love you. Got some great match Catholics versus Mormons. Uh, Miami versus Texas is, you know, a callback to, to bygone days of two juggernaut teams. Uh, so man, I, I am, I am living in your reality, man. I hope that's going to be fun. It would also be very cool to see Tennessee go freeze their asses off in Columbus. I would be, I'd be, I'd be rooting for an earthquake, but, uh, yeah, that would be a, that'd be a fun game. Well, that's just kind of what you're hoping for with this playoff, right? It's just that you you get to see some of the things that we we because they would never, right? Like you're never going to schedule someone that late in the season, non conference. Even if they do schedule each other non conference, it's always going to be in September. So I think even thinking of like a outdoor game in Autzen in the playoff where it's only 60,000 people and it's an, an impossible ticket to get and yeah. how many other people are going to be outside of the stadium and um, just having that atmosphere or even having some cold weather team going to an SEC school for a playoff game, right? Like that's just uh, going to gonna be exciting. Yeah. So my last question for you, I mean, you can be as short as you want. This could take a long time. I do have so to piss, maybe. so we'll see how we'll see how uh, how what I'm feeling. What do you think is most like more likely to happen that Notre Dame joins a conference or that there's a 16 team playoff? And this is why I think Notre Dame is at the crux of this. I think the Pac-2 are going to fill the Pac this year. I think they're probably only going to go to eight because they still have a year left. As long as they can get to eight, they can stay the Pac-12, likely to be Power 5 still. So then, in a playoff format, if you're getting five automatic bids of the Power 5 plus the group of six, that's six, and then you're thinking, okay, the SEC and the Big Ten are also then going to get at least three in a given year. So then you're already to 10. If you're Notre Dame, you're you're fighting for two spots. Yeah. And you, and we you play an ACC about, schedule. Right. So. You, you, you haven't talked about the runner-up in an ACC, a runner-up in the Big 12, or very likely the fourth best in the big 10 or the sec in a given year that just makes well that Notre yeah. dame probably anxious well they they play they basically play the acc right like the past two years it's they basically are, are playing the acc schedule um <clears throat> you know the 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 football only side of me says that they're gonna have to join up and join the acc makes sense um <clears throat> but as long as that TV deal with NBC is still in place, that's just too much good money just going straight to them that they're not going to turn that down. So as long as that type of TV deal with NBC continues, I see no reason for them to join up. <clears throat> and as long as the committee keeps treating them uh, preferentially, uh, you know, then, I mean, how many committee members have Catholic guilt? <laughs> that's that's ultimately the question. Will NBC continue to write checks, and will the committee continue to treat them preferentially? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I that's where I, I think it, in that scenario, the twelve or the sixteen team playoff to they would definitely push for that to to give them that cushion is probably what yeah. would happen. I'm curious with NBC if they'll continue to pay this because yeah. they also bought the rights to the Big Ten for the first time this year, and that's yeah. that's you know they have other well, options and, now. And also, if you're Notre Dame, you can't really afford to lose. Right, you yeah. have to be undefeated or yeah. one loss maybe to right. get in. It has to be like a really close loss. It has to be a loss like to Ohio State, right? Uh, or a, a program of that caliber. You can't do what they did last year and lose to Ohio State. You know, I wonder where Lou Holtz is right now. I like know where Lou Holtz is right now, and then also lose to Pitt. You know, you can't do that. Whereas if you were part of a conference, you could lose to Pitt. If you're part of the ACC, yep. you lose to Pitt. Then just go win the conference championship. You got a little bit more wiggle room. So I'll tell you what, if I'm them, I'm saying, hey, pack two. Would you like the NBC? Would you like this? Because I'll tell you what, that's a conference you're always going to goddamn win. <sighs> I get it from like... Like you, know, from it wouldn't all do, of the they, they, they need they need the prestige. Like, they need the prestige, and they I think align more to an ACC type of school. But I'll tell you, if I was them, I'd take over that pack. Now, team. well, now, so so if Florida State and Miami are able to bolt from the ACC, then I think the ACC makes really hard. Even if they think that's going to happen, you got to fill that void. That's yeah. where you could go ahead and say, "Hey, Notre Dame." Yeah, that that's what they your, would do. While. Yeah, and they would they would have to figure out the TV rights situation, but I'm sure they would they would figure that out for them, right? Yeah. They would uh, Notre Absolutely. Dame. You keep your NBC, and everyone else will do something different, yeah. and you guys will deal with it. Because yeah. if they don't come, we're not going to have a conference. So yeah. yeah. But anyway, I thought I'd ask. I, there was something interesting as I was doing this calculus. I was like. In a given year, Notre Dame yeah, is no. flirting with being out. And could you imagine that? It's a good question. It's, it's, it's a very valid question. All right. Well, that is going to do it for us, folks. That is the end of our conference preview. I had, again, a awesome time doing this, EJ. I, I know you did as well. I love your playoff. I can't wait to see it come to life. I hope you guys, all the listeners, enjoyed this as well. I hope you're ready. For Tales of the Trophy Season 4. Hope this is a nice little primer for you guys. Yes, nice little aperitif, not an aperitif, hors d'oeuvre. Yes, it, it is It is coming soon. Week 0 is coming soon. We will not be doing our pick em for Week 0 because there's only four games. However, we will be giving you guys our one favorite play uh, for the pod, but we'll, we'll, we'll remind you guys as that gets a little bit closer. Um, but for Mike, I'm EJ. Always remember, too much of anything is bad, but too much good whiskey is barely enough. Cheers, boys. Cheers.